All right, we're on video five in the beginner's guide to properly structured whole life insurance. The last video, we talked about the importance of lifetime compounding. And again, conceptually uh, understanding that when set up and used properly, your dollar will grow the rest of your life without taxes, losses, and fees, and how that can be uh, a pretty incredible benefit. Now we're gonna look at a calculator using truth concepts. And I just essentially break down in you know less than 10 minutes um, how we can understand what's called internal rate of return and how internal rate of return when you add in things like taxes and fees and cost of insurance can actually be elevated. And while life insurance isn't getting you a six, seven, eight percent rate of return in some factors, you have to earn that just to keep up with the uh, growth rate of life insurance. And so just the, the reminder, this is not an investment where we are never selling life insurance as a better growth vehicle. But when you understand all the dyna and dynamics of life insurance, it's a pretty amazing vehicle for growth long term. We're going to be looking at some numbers as it relates to a life insurance contract. And there's a couple things I want to say, first of all, first of all, I'm using a calculator by uh, Todd Langford, Truth Concepts. You can check them out at truthconcepts.com. And he just, he's passionate about creating tools to help people see the truth about, about numbers. Then the second thing is I'm just giving you a generic, um, life insurance, you know, illustration that I made that's overfunded, but there's so many ways to overfund that, uh, I'm just, I decided to do a straight up 30 year overfunded policy. And it might, I might do a video or two on how the different techniques that we do in overfunding, but so don't, there's, there's better designs for depending on what you want. Number three is, um, some of your internal rate of return for people will be better. Some will be not so good. It, we have to understand the point. The point that I'm getting across is, uh, is I want to share with you that if you understand what I'm about to share with you about overfunded whole life insurance, it's one of the greatest places to save your money, period. End of story. And that's my hope. And, 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 if, the, and if the rates of return are a little bit less or a little bit more, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but so I just wanted to kind of get that out there. The first thing that we need to look at is we have to understand what the internal rate of return is. This you're seeing, this is just a straight up illustration and you're showing like you put $20,000 of premium in and the net cash value is about 12,000. Now, what some people will say right off the bat is, bam, you just lost 8,000 bucks, <laughs> which uh, is not quite true, but uh, it, I can see where they're meaning that. It's that's This is the money that you have accessible to use and this is your death benefit. You can see that the death benefit's growing and because it has to every single year and you can see that your cash value grows. Now, if we look at it over a 30 year time period, we compare it to a savings account, you can see the savings account is ahead in the first couple of years. You put $20,000 in, your savings account has 20,000, okay? That's awesome. Whereas your permanent life insurance has only 12,000 that you have accessible. Now, if you zoom out though, if you go all the way to 30 years, your savings account, um, assuming it earns 0%, you have 600,000. And assuming the internal rate, rate of return of 4% or 4.01%, your account is at 1.1 million, a little bit more than that. Now, one of the things when we ever we look at internal rate of return, we have to understand is this 4% meaning it's finally earning 4%? Or is 4% meaning that it's earning 4% every single year, even including the years that obviously it's not growing at 4%? And it is the latter. When we talk about internal rate of return, we're talking about the actual growth rate. It is including the death benefit growing every year. It's including all the other factors, paying people like me to set them up. That's all included in this product. Now, it what if like, we're, we're going to look at what an alternative account would have to earn just to keep up with this. Um, but I mean, let me ask you a question. And, and by the way, this, these illustrations are based on today's interest rates. They're not, I mean, in 20 years ago, it would have looked a lot more impressive, right? But because interest rates are at, at an all time low and because of our environment, 4% and actual tax free growth rates, not that bad, but, um, it's a lot of people will say that they can get a better rate of return. And again, if that's you, so can I, and I'll share with you why getting a better rate of return is not a problem. Ultimately, it's a good thing. Um, but okay. So let's look at this. How, what kind of savings accounts out there will give you control and access to your money and pay you anywhere near 4%. 
you know if, if if there's out there let me know because at the end of the day if we're looking at this and what it is a savings alternative a better saving strategy it, it gives a very good rate of return but we also have to understand that this is a tax-free four percent if you put your money in an alternative account whether it's in a savings account whether it's an investment do you not have to pay taxes on it especially if you want the liquidity and control remember we need to compare this um, to like assets life insurance when set up properly is an and asset i'll explain in another video how you can borrow against and your money will continue to grow that's awesome okay we're not even i mean no other account like in a savings account or, or an investment account it's usually an or asset where if you take money out it's no longer growing for you we're not even going to look at that aspect we're just going to look at what an account would have to earn to produce the same amount and so when i ask people are taxes going up or down i get so many different answers but most people will say that taxes are going up and in my humble opinion, taxes are going to go way up. If you look at where our country's at, where you look at where our debt's at, where you look at our spending's at, you look at just, just the economy in general, I don't think we can afford long term to keep taxes low. Even though I'll go on record and say I'm not a huge fan or proponent of increasing taxes to 70, 80 percent. I think there's there's a chance for that. But but for now, I'm just going to show a 30% tax bracket. Some of you guys, that's going to be super low. Uh, some of you guys, that's going to be super high. And um, so let's, let's include just assuming a 30% tax rate. Now your account would have to earn 5.72% every single year without a down year just to produce the same amount of money after 30 years. So then another way of saying that is if you did not do this life insurance and you put your money in an account and wanted control and access to it, and assuming you had to pay taxes on the growth, you would have to earn 5.72% every single year without a down year. Again, is that is that doable? Sure. But but for many of you, most people aren't getting that in their investments over a 30 year time period, let alone saving strategy. Now 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 that we're talking about 5.72 percent now like what if don't you have to factor in like fees don't you have to factor in some kind of cost because again this is assuming uh not the life insurance doesn't necessarily have fees but the cost of the insurance and so if you include just a one percent fee now your now your account has to do 6.79 percent every single year without a down year now we're starting to ask the question do your long-term investment strategy, can it give you that and the control that you want? And, and this is where, again, where many people are like, okay, Caleb, I can still get a better rate of return than this. And what we could also do is factor in, you know, the cost of term insurance. What if you're paying 600 bucks for, you know, a million dollars worth of term insurance? You know, and, and again, this is a level and you can see that this increases, but now that's taking money outside uh, what that could be invested. And now your investment needs to work more hard and earn over 7% every single year without a down year. Now, again, is that a good rate of return or not? I personally, as an entrepreneur, can earn way more than that over my lifetime controlling money. I'm not saying that this is a place that just park your money and forget it. I'm saying that if we're looking at the rate of return, we have to understand what kind of asset class this is. And this is considered an and asset, meaning your money is going to grow whether you borrow against it or not. It's going to grow whether if you have a better rate of return that you can get, you can borrow against this capital and it will also ultimately continue to grow because it's set up in the contract. It's the whole idea of controlled compounding, controlling your money, but letting it still compound. You, you see that your death benefit's also growing. And so what account out there can truly give you this kind of growth, assuming taxes, fees, assuming the cost of a permanent life insurance contract, what kind of plan can give you all that and give you the ability to use the money throughout your life? That's my aha moment. My aha moment was, wait, this has nothing to do with this gets a better rate of return than an investment. Although many of people are not even getting 7% in their investment. This, I mean, they're not even getting anywhere close to that, but it has everything to do with making your, your wealth more efficient. And if we can have your money efficiently grow, not just to the day that you die. And another question I want to ask is, can this not grow to 85? You can, this, this strategy, your money can grow the rest of your life. 
Whereas in an alternative investment, you have to, you have to take that money out eventually. And, you know, ultimately this, this money is, this money is safe. This money is not going to go through the ups and downs. So it's, it's so strategic to get our money to start growing. And the other thing is, can you not save more money in a place that you have access and control over it? And so with all those, with all those reasons, that's why I'm a huge fan of understanding that, yes, this is not going to get you double digits rates of return, but it's not, that's not why it exists. It exists to save money, let it grow for the rest of your life and be able to identify areas to use it. This is a cookie cutter example, but I want to illustrate for those of you that are caught up on rate of return and very analytical, that it's not necessarily just about getting a better rate of return, but it's understanding how to use it throughout your life. Hey, it's Caleb Williams here. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to watch our YouTube videos. We put a lot of time and energy into making them informational and helpful. Um, I also want you to know that we do this for a living. So if you're an advisor, an agent, and want to learn more about the and asset and how to incorporate this in your life, check us out at theandasset.com. Also, if you're a consumer, if you're someone that wants to learn more about the and asset in your business or in your retirement plan or in your life and, and asking questions like, would this be beneficial to me. We want to help you. You can check us out at andasset.com. We have links down in the description where you can get the book. You can watch different videos and learn more. Uh, we just appreciate you. We appreciate if you give this video a like, give us a comment and share this with people that need to see this content.